We learned about the product rules of exponents or shortcuts, and now it's time to learn about the shortcuts and rules that pertain to quotients filled with exponential expressions. And the first one we're going to look at is not really a rule. It's more like a shortcut that you can use if you notice it. Okay, and it has to do with negative exponents in a fraction. And if I use the definition of a negative exponent, I can simplify these expressions. Now when I do that, I want you to see the result and figure out if you can come up with the shortcut before I say anything. All right, so by definition, if I take x to the negative 2 and I get rid of the negative exponent, remember that means reciprocal, so I have 1 over x squared all over y. And I don't like having a fraction in a fraction, so what I have to do is scale this up by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by x squared. And what happens here is I get left with a 1, and in my denominator I get x squared y. Right, so before I simplified, it was x to the negative 2 over y. After I simplified, it was 1 over x squared y. And if I do something similar with this next example, I have x in my numerator, and y to the negative 2 power is 1 over y squared. Once again, I don't like having fractions in fractions, so I have to scale this fraction up by multiplying it by y squared, and multiply the top by y squared as well, and then I end up with x y squared over 1, which is just xy squared. So if I had x over y to the negative second power, it ends up being xy squared over 1, or just xy squared. And actually, you can, you can predict what this one's going to be if you think you know what's going on up here. Same thing I did before. By definition, I'm going to rewrite that as 1 over x squared, 1 over y squared. And I don't like the x squared in the numerator, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x squared. And I don't like that 1 over y squared, so I'm going to multiply this by y squared. And then stuff's going to cancel. The x squareds are gone out of the numerator. The y squareds are gone out of the denominator. And what I'm left with is y squared over x squared. And I started off with x to the negative 2 over y to the negative 2. So if I think about what's going on from here to here, from the beginning to the end, and I'm looking for a shortcut, well, it appears that if I have a negative exponent in some part of a fraction, when I go ahead and simplify it, what's going to happen is the thing with the negative exponent is going to move down to the other part of the fraction with a positive exponent. So if I have a negative exponent in the numerator, it becomes positive in the denominator. If I have a negative exponent in the denominator, it becomes positive in the numerator. And in this case, I had one on top and one on bottom, and they just switch locations. And it kind of makes sense if you think about what a reciprocal is, right? Reciprocal means you flip things, right? So if it started off in the numerator, it makes sense that it's going to end up in the denominator. Okay, so let's see if we can use this little shortcut to help us simplify some stuff. So let's say I have this 2d cubed c to the negative 2 over 3fg to the negative 4, all right? And so if I look at this, what's preventing it from being simplified are the two negative exponents. And I can go ahead and simplify this by definition, but I'm going to get fractions and fractions, and I just want to use my shortcut. And so I'm going to take this one chunk at a time, and I look at each base. So nothing happens to 2, so it stays where it is. Nothing happens to 3, so it stays exactly where it is. d cubed stays exactly where it is, and f stays exactly where it is. Now this c to the negative 2 is a negative exponent in the numerator, so it becomes a positive exponent in the denominator, according to my shortcut. This g to the negative 4 in the denominator becomes g to the 4th in the numerator. And now this is a simplified version. And so that's how that shortcut can help us out. Um, I don't have to, you know, by definition, put the 1 over c squared and 1 over g to the 4th and deal with all that. I can just move things one at a time. I want you to simplify 6r to the negative 2g over 5mp to the negative 3. So now let's look at the actual quotient rule, which is a shortcut for when a base appears both in the numerator and the denominator. And I'm going to show you this by definition. And while I'm showing you this, I want you to think about, hey, what's the actual shortcut here? So if I have to simplify h to the 8th power 
over h cubed. The base of h appears in the numerator and denominator, and I have to simplify it out. And right now, the only way I have to do that is by definition, which means expand this thing out. So I have h times 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 h. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And then on the denominator, I have h, h, and h. And if you remember back from normal fractions when you didn't have variables in them, if you saw like 3 times 2 over 3 times 5, you know how you could just cancel off the 3's and be left with 2 fifths? Same thing happens here. I can cancel off the H's that appear in the numerator and denominator, and I am left with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 H's, or H to the fifth. Now the shortcut is figuring out what happened with the exponents. So what happened with the exponents? I went from an 8 and a 3 to a 5. So what's the actual shortcut? Well, if I think about it, what I did was I took away as many exponents that were in the denominator from the numerator. So it's h to the 8th minus 3, or h to the 5th. So what the quotient rule says is if I have the same base divided by each other, all I have to do is subtract the exponents. So the quotient rule says subtract the exponents. Okay. So in a cloud, I'm actually going to write the actual quotient rule. It says that a cannot equal 0 and that m and n are integers. And they don't have to be integers. They can be any kind of number. Since we're in Algebra 1, though, our exponents are going to be integers. So a to the m divided by a to the n equals a to the m minus n. So this is the quotient rule. And it works with positive or negative exponents. doesn't matter. Uh, you just have to be very careful with the sign if something is negative. So for example, if I have j to the fifth over j to the seventh, I use the quotient rule. That's j to the five minus seven, or j to the negative two, which is not simplified because I can't have a negative exponent, which means it's just one over j squared. And you can double check it by just imagining what this looks like, right? Expand it out. I have five j's in the numerator, and I have seven j's in the denominator, and they're going to cancel off and I'm going to be left with two j's in the denominator. And so what if I have k to the 12th over k to the 12th? Same deal. I take the exponents and I subtract them. I get k to the 0th power, which is just 1, which totally makes sense because they're all going to cancel out. And once again, this works with negative exponents as well. So if I have m to the negative 3 over m to the negative 4, I do the same thing. I take m to the negative 3 and I subtract off negative 4 because the the quotient rule says subtract the exponents. And so then I have m to the negative 3 plus 4, which is just m. Now there are any number of ways you can simplify this. You can use the shortcut I just showed you and flip the locations of the m to m to the fourth over m to the third, and you're going to end up with m. Same answer. So why don't you try and apply the quotient rule to this expression, x to the fifth over x to the negative eighth. So now that we have a bunch of rules for exponents, I can start to have you apply them in conjunction with each other, so meaning multiple step simplification examples like this one. And the technique I'm going to show you, or the way I want you to think about these problems, is I want you to break them up into chunks. No matter how big and disgusting a problem I give you, and I can make a really giant, horrible problem, if you realize that all I do is I take simpler problems and I put them together, then to simplify them, all you have to do is find those simpler problems and deal with it one little chunk at a time. So if I look at this, I really have two chunks of problems here. One chunk deals with the coefficients, so the 18 and the 2. And my second chunk is the chunk that deals with the n's. And so when I simplify this, I'm going to take it one chunk at a time. I'm going to simplify chunk 1, which is 18 over 2, which just is 9. And then I'm going to deal with chunk 2, which is the m's. And I can use my quotient rule, m to the 7 minus 4, which is 9m to the third power. Okay, so let's look at something a little bit bigger and with more chunks. So now let's look at this example that has me needing to use the quotient rule and deals with negative exponents at the same time. But I'm not going to be intimidated at all because I recognize that this is really three simpler problems that have just been squished together 
into something that looks worse. So I'm going to take this one chunk at a time. I'm going to start with the 12s. Now there are a number of ways of, to dealing with the 12s. You can use the trick with the negative exponents and the fractions and move things around. You can expand those out if you want. You can write them by definition. You can actually use your calculator to figure out what that is. But I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to use the quotient rule, which says that 12, since it's appearing in the numerator and denominator, I can just subtract off the exponents. So negative 2 minus negative 3 is what the exponent's going to be. So 12, negative 2 minus negative 3. Remember, the two negatives come together to be a plus. So it's the same thing as negative 2 plus 3, which is just 12 to the first power, or 12. So chunk 1, taken care of. Now I'm going to deal with chunk 2, which is the chunk with the Q's. And once again, I can deal with this any number of ways, but I'm going to just stick with the quotient rule, which says Q to the fifth minus four, which is just Q. And then my final chunk deals with the R's. And once again, I'm just gonna use the quotient rule. So it's two minus negative two, which is the same thing as two plus two, which is R to the fourth power. So this is my simplified expression. And no matter how ugly this thing is I give you, just take it one chunk at a time. So I want you to simplify 4n to the negative 3s to the 7th divided by 12n to the 4th s to the negative 5th power. Now for the final exponent rule, which is quotient to a power, which is a shortcut you use when you have a fraction raised to a power. And I'm going to show you one example using the definition of exponents, and I want you to see if you can figure out the shortcut. So if I have t over u to the fourth power, by definition, this is the same thing as t over u times t over u times t over u times t over u. And if I rewrite this by exponents, I get t to the fourth over u to the fourth. So what's the shortcut? Well, the shortcut says that if I have something inside of parentheses, if it's a quotient, all I have to do is apply that exponent to each of the bases. And it's just like product to a power, except that it's using a division. And like I said, with product to a power, you cannot have addition or subtraction inside of your parentheses. It is strictly when you have a base divided by a base, or multiplied by a base. No addition or subtraction. So I'm going to write this rule in a little cloud. First criteria is that a and, b, uh -oh, a and b cannot equal 0, and that my exponent in Algebra 1 is going to be an integer. And what the rule says is if I have a over b raised to the nth power, that's the same thing as a to the m over b to the m. And this is quotient to a power. Now, of course, this works with positive exponents, negative exponents, doesn't matter. So let's look at this example. If I have v over w, raised to the negative 9 power, that's the same thing as v to the negative 9 over w to the negative 9. Now, of course, you can't leave it like that because that's gross. You can't have negative exponents in a fraction. So I can go ahead and use my negative exponent in a fraction shortcut and change it to w to the 9th or v to the 9th. Now, that's not the only way to simplify this one. If you remember the negative exponents definition, you can take the reciprocal first and get w over v, and then raise it to the ninth power and get w to the ninth, v to the ninth. And since we have a rule like this for products, I can combine products and quotients. So if I have three over four y quantity squared, then I can apply the quotient to a power rule and the product to a power rule and get three squared over four squared y squared and be careful, one of the things that people forget is to raise that 4 to the second power as well. If you ever forget this shortcut, you can always imagine what these things look like expanded out. And if you were to do this by definition, you'd get 3 over 4y times 3 over 4y, which is where the 3 squared, the 4 squared, and the y squared come from. And so now just to simplify, I get 9 sixteenths y squared as my simplified answer. I want you to simplify these two examples, 2 over x to the negative 3 and z over 2x to the fourth power.